right. Hello, we will uh, get started. So I'm gonna pull up the PowerPoint in just a second, um, but I want to explain kind of how this series is gonna go because today we are focusing on the V form, but it will be a continuing series with all of our technologies. And it's gonna be really a testing format. Of course, I'm not like testing you specifically, you're testing yourself and I'm just giving you the answers. Um, so it may seem really easy to you, it may seem hard, it may seem like some answers are really easy, some are more complicated, but I think the, the, really the good thing about this webinar is when we get towards the end and I'm going through the answers, that I'll be able to discuss um, the whys and the hows, um, and then that may, you know, just kind of click with a few things like, oh, you know, I, I was doing this and now I need to change how I was doing it. Um, so it's just kind of something that may just catch, you know, here and there, just little things that you could adjust. Um, shouldn't be too long. It's going to be um, pretty quick, 20 questions. Um, I recommend getting a pen and a piece of paper. And it's going to be multiple choice, 20 questions, multiple choice, A, B, C, D. I think some of them I have A, B, C, D, M, E. Um, and at the end, we'll go through the answers. I won't know if you did great or if you did not, because uh, this is going to be for you. And then we'll go through um, everything at the end. Okay, so I'll get it pulled up. I'm excited to do these. What this is going to be really great for, too, in the future is if you have new operators that want to, um, you know, well, need to, I should say, learn the technology, they can watch the didactic webinars and learn. They can watch the hands-on webinars and learn. And then they have an, uh, the ability of going back and testing their knowledge on these webinars. I think that'll be great. Okay, so now I'm going to share my screen. Give me just one moment. Okay. Oh, I forgot to introduce myself. I'm so sorry. Um, my name is Kara Moncrief. I'm the clinical director for Viora. Uh, I forget now because I've done so, so many of these webinars that I tend to forget to now introduce myself, but that is who I am. Okay, so we will get started. This first part, I'm not going to talk a ton. I'm just going to kind of read out the questions and then just write down, write down your answers, and then I'll talk a lot towards the end, but this won't be long at all. Okay, so here we go. V form, you know what? I do need to move where my face and my camera is so I can actually read these. There we go. Okay. When performing circumferential reduction treatment, which applicator do you use? Always the, the large one, BC is the large, um, or I should say BC stands for body contouring. A, large, B, small, C, medium, or D, it depends on the treatment area size and sensitivity. You write down your answer. Okay, now we'll go to the next one. Okay, you want to perform a cellulite treatment and you see that the glycerin bottle is empty. What do you do? A, use another oil. B, use ultrasound gel. C, don't use anything and treat the patient with RF energy at level one. D, treatment should be canceled until glycerin is available. We'll go to the next one. I know this is kind of quick. I hope I'm not going too fast. Okay, next one. While performing a cellulite treatment in RF mode one, RF level three, and vacuum level four, you note the treatment area's temperature has dropped to 38 degrees. What do you do? So this is after the preheating mode. Now you're in mode one and you're working in these levels and you notice like, uh-oh, it's 38 degrees. What do you do? Okay, so A, continue working in the same manner because only in the preheating phase is it important to keep the temperature between 39 and 42 degrees Celsius. Remember, that's our target temperature. B, stop the treatment and start all over again from preheating phase in mode four. That's what we use for preheating is mode four. Uh, C, raise the RF energy or D, release pulses with more overlapping or raise the RF energy level if it's tolerated by the patient. Okay, we'll go to the next one. 
Okay, you want to perform a cellulite treatment on the buttocks for a patient who went through the same treatment last year on her abdomen. Do you need to perform the test procedure again for this patient? A, there is no need for a test procedure since it is the same person and the old data can be used. B, there is no need for a test procedure if you treat the abdomen. C, test procedure should be performed every four weeks for each patient. D, test procedures need to be performed for every new treatment area. Okay, we'll go to the next one. What is the maximal depth of penetration of mode four? Um, A, the sum as in mode one. Uh, sorry, the sum. I was, I was like skipping, my eyes were skipping to D. <laughs> So that didn't make sense. Well, let me back up. A, the same as in mode one. B, the same as in mode two. C, the same as in mode three or D. Some of the depth penetrations of mode one, mode two, and mode three. What is the maximal depth of penetration of mode four? Okay, go to the next one. What is the most important advantage of V-Form? A, it features core technology. B, it uses RF energy and vacuum. C, it has different sized applicators. Or D, it has multiple polar configurations. Kind of a trick question, but we'll talk about it. Next one, what are the targets of deep heating by RF? What are the targets of deep heating by RF? Fat cells, fibroblast cells, connective tissue and blood vessels, or all of the above. So what are the target or targets of deep heating by RF? Fat cells, fibroblast cells, connective tissue and blood vessels, or all of the above. Here we go to the next one. Why do women suffer more from cellulite than men do? A, women have less collagen in their skin and a higher percentage of body fat. B, women have different hormonal fluctuations. C, women have a different structure of the subcutaneous layer. D would be A and C, or E would be A, B, and C. So kind of like all of the above would be E. Okay, go to the next one. Which of the below statements is false? A, collagen is a major structural protein in the body. So this is false, this is not true, right? Collagen is a major structure pro structural protein in the body. B, collagen holds the skin together and has greater tensile strength than steel. C, the quantity and quality of your skin's collagen has a major role in your skin's appearance. D, the amount of collagen tends to increase with age. So which one of all four of those is a false statement? Okay, next. What are the unique features of the core technology? A, allows independent heating depth control by applying three different RF frequencies. B, only core technology incorporates vacuum. C, combined multi-channel mode that employs all three RF frequencies. D would be A and C, or E would be B and C. So what are the unique features of the core technology? It either allows independent heating depth control by applying three different RF frequencies. Second one would be only core technology incorporates vacuum. And C would be combined multi-channel mode that employs all three RF frequencies. Or is two of those true? Or is another two of those true? Okay, we'll go to the next one. One of the main purposes of deep tissue heating with RF energy is to A, decrease 
I did, I thought I removed this one. Sorry, decreased diffusivity of oxygen released by blood cells. B, buildup of rigid collagen crosslinks. C, facilitate the breakdown of stored energy, which is triglycerides in a fat cell. Or D, decreased cell metabolism. So one of the main purposes of deep tissue heating with RF energy is to decrease diff di diffusivity of oxygen released by blood cells, B, build up of, I can't talk, rigid collagen crosslinks, C, facilitate the breakdown of stored energy triglycerides in fat cells, D, decrease cell metabolism. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, next one. I changed around a couple of these. So I'm like, did I, did it not save? I'm not sure. Um, next one, the vacuum intensifies the treatment to facilitate deeper penetration of heat. B, increases local blood circulation, oxygen level, and nutrient diff diffusion. C, stimulates lymphatic drainage and reduces edema. Or B, all of the above. So the vacuum either intensifies the treatment to facilitate deeper penetration of heat. It uh, increases local blood circulation, oxygen level, and nu nutrient deficient diffusion, sorry. Or it stimulates lymphatic drainage and reduces edema or all of the above. Okay, next one. How do we determine the maximum vacuum level for your patient? A, the highest level that is tolerated by the patient. B, the highest level that does not cause any side effects. C, the level that was determined by the test procedure. D, for maximal results, always work with level four. How do you determine the maximum level vacuum level for your patient. Okay, we'll go to the next one. In the preheating phase, which tissue is heated? This is when you're preheating the patient with the V-form. A, only, de uh -huh, I can't talk. A, only the dermis layer of the skin. B, only the fat tissue. C, depends on the application used. D, the dermis and subcutaneous layers of the skin. In the preheating phase, which tissue is heated? Okay, we'll go to the next one. I think we're almost halfway done. In phase three and four, fibroblast stimulation, during the cellulite reduction treatment, which of the following applies? So in phase three and four, which is the last two, um, where we're doing fibroblast stimulation during the cellulite reduction treatment, which of the following applies? A, working with a 30 to 40% overlap. B, working in the direction of the lymphatic system. C, skin temperature can be reduced below 39 to 42 degrees since fat cells are not, are not treated during this phase. D, you need to work in the maximum vacuum intensity as determined by the test procedure. So which of the following applies to those last two phases, which are fibroblast stimulation in either bon body contouring or cellulite reduction? They're the same protocol. Okay, we'll go to the next one. Treatment with the refit protocol is aimed at A, treating wrinkles and stretch marks, B, treating lax, sagging skin on the body, C, removing tattoo or permanent makeup, D, reducing cellulite appearance. Treatment with the refit protocol is aimed at. Okay, we'll go to the next one. I feel like those are a bit. Faster. Uh, the refit protocol affects lax skin by building new collagen in the dermal tissue, B, building new collagen in the epidermal tissue, C, building new collagen by lymphatic drainage, 
D, building new collagen in the dermal and hypodermal tissue. So we're rebuilding collagen in the dermal tissue and the epidermal tissue by lymphatic drainage or in the dermal and hypodermal tissue. Okay, next one. Which RF mode penetrates deepest into the skin? A, all modes have the same depth of penetration. B, mode one. C, mode two. Or D, mode three. Which RF mode penetrates the deepest? Oh, it's kind of quick, so we can move on. Increasing the vacuum level will have the effect of A, achieving better lymphatic drainage, B, increasing treatment time, C, deeper RF energy penetration, or D, which would be A and C, achieving better lymphatic drainage, and then C is deeper RF energy penetration. So increasing the vacuum level will have the effect of Next one. What is the advantage of multipolar RF configuration? A, it provides faster treatments. B, it provides homogeneous heating. C, it provides a more convenient treatment for both patient and practitioner. D, all of the above. Move to the next one. Oh, I am on the wrong PowerPoint. I knew it. 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 Well, bummer. That's okay. We're going to still go with the answers that we just did. <laughs> but let me pull up the right one. I was like, wait a minute. I changed some of these. Cause some of them were like a little too easy, I thought, and I wanted to make it a little harder. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna give you guys those ones that were just a little bit harder. I'm so bummed that I was on the wrong one. I thought, I was like, there's something up. Okay, so we'll still go through those answers, um, but I'll just give a couple pop, pop questions, uh, extra credit. <laughs> <laughs> um, let me see which ones I changed here. Okay, here's one, extra credit one. You want to perform a cellulite treatment on the buttocks for a patient. Is there anything that needs to be considered? A, no, treating the buttocks is like treating any other area. B, vacuum should be kept lower than vacuum three. C, the sides of the buttocks should be avoided. D, you should stay one inch above the gluteal fold. So if you're gonna perform cellulite on the buttocks, is there anything that need, needs to be considered? And if so, which one of those is it? Okay, so that's a little extra credit there. Now we'll go, um, I'll find the other ones I did. Here's another one, extra credit. What is the most important thing to remember when using the V-form on the lower face? A, always use the medium-sized applicator. B, never use RF energy higher than level two. C, always stay below the cheekbone and stay under vacuum level three. D, never use multiple stacked pulses. So what's the most important thing to remember when you're using the V-form on the lower face? Okay, let's look, look, let's look for more extra credit. Um, get that one, get that one, that one. Maybe those are the only two. Okay, another extra credit. Pick the truest out of all of these. A patient that is very thin wants her abdomen treated for a small amount of localized belly fat. A, use the small applicator. B, use lower RF energy. 
C, use lower vacuum intensity, or D, use the medium or large applicator. So this is a very thin girl with just a little bit of localized fat on her abdomen. Would you use a small applicator, use lower RF intensity, use lower vacuum intensity, or use the medium or large applicator? Okay, let's see if I can find another extra credit here. Nope. That was it, just those three. I just switched out three of the other ones for those. So we'll go through all of those answers. Okay, so now I have to switch PowerPoints again to get the, the answers of the, the first part that we just went through. So let me do that really quick. Uh, here it is. So now I'm gonna scroll all the way down because originally I was gonna do this webinar testing your knowledge with every hand piece all in one long webinar, but I figured like, oh my God, people are gonna get like uh, zoned out and like, this is too much, too much quizzing, especially at the end of a, a long day probably. Uh, so I just broke it down per hand piece uh, and I took the V form out in its own and then switched it around a little bit. So I just definitely clicked on the wrong, uh... there we go, okay. So I'm gonna give you guys, okay, here's all of our answers. Slideshow from current slide, Zoom. Why is it doing that? Okay, so here's all of our answers for, for the first 20 that we went through, not the extra credit. And then I'm gonna go back to the other PowerPoint, give you the extra credit answers, but I'm gonna go slide by slide and, and more so discuss things, not, not for forever, but you know, just a little bit of discussion I think will be helpful. Um, okay, so first one, what answer was D? Um, it depends on the treatment area and size and sensitivity. I'm not gonna elaborate on any of these answers quite yet. I'm gonna go back to the, the slide and talk about it more. Um, two was D, three was D, and four was D, five was A, six was A, seven was D, eight was E, nine was D, 10 was D, 11 was C, 12 was D, 13 was C, 14 was D, 15 was A, 16 was B, 17 was D, 18 was B, 19 was C, and 20 was D. And then I'll, I'll answer the, the pop quiz ones too. So first I'm gonna now switch back to the original PowerPoint. So now there's our answers, got them all, check, 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 change the ones you need to change. Um, and we'll go back to the original one. Sorry about that. This is not how I planned it. Okay, now we'll discuss it. Um, oops. Oh, I meant to go back to the original. Top of the first one, I just went. Oh, I'm slide. Why? Why is it doing this? <laughs> you guys could read really fast. You know it's coming on the next webinars. <laughs> okay, so the uh, answer to the first one: When performing circumferential reduction treatment, which applicator do you use? Um, and the answer is D, it depends on the treatment area size and sensitivity. So um, when you think about circumferential reduction, it could be abdomen, it could be flanks, but also it could be, you know, the circumference of the submental area, which we know we can use the small here. So it depends on the treatment area size and sensitivity. Um, if somebody has larger arms, don't use the small applicator, use the medium. If the medium fits, you're gonna heat better, you're gonna hold better heat, you're gonna get better results quicker, I should say. You're not working as long in the room. Um, if somebody has a larger abdomen, use the large. I always like to find the tip size that fits that area um, the best before you even plug it in and start pulsing or even get 
glycerin on them. Um, find what's gonna fit well, like the flanks. I'll see if the large can fit on the flanks and if it can, great, I'll move forward with that. If it doesn't, I've kind of positioned it. I'm like, oh, no, I'm gonna get into a chance of creating an arc on them. I'll switch it over to the medium for safety, but try to use the largest one that you can. Okay, two, you want to perform a cellulite treatment and you see that the glycerin bottle is empty, what do you do? And the answer is D, treatment should be canceled until glycerin is available. Absolutely, you cannot use anything else. It's, it's kind of like, I'll, I'll give you this example. You run out of gas on the side of the road and you're like, well, wait, I have some vegetable oil in, in the back of my car. Let me just throw some of that in there and just see if it'll work to at least get me to a gas station. <laughs> It's not going to work, but let's just say it did. That was probably a $20,000 mistake that you made. Um, so don't do that, right? You don't want your system to not work properly just because you ran out of glycerin for one patient. Um, you can easily gl get glycerin at any pharmacy. So even if you didn't realize it, oh my goodness, we didn't prepare, we ran out of glycerin, you'll have to cancel that appointment and head off to Walgreens or somewhere like that. Get 100% vegetable glycerin and rebook them. It's much better than trying to use something else and it completely messing up your system. Plus you can't use any oils because oils and, and the uh, electrodes, the RF energy will create arcs on their skin and will create burns on them. So it's not safe. Glycerin doesn't have any oil in it. That's why it's safe. Plus the system knows how to, you know, work it out. Uh, knows how to filter it. Okay, so next one, while performing a cellulite treatment in RF mode one, RF level three, and vacuum level four, you know the treatment area's temperature has dropped to 38, what do you do? Um, the answer is gonna be D, release pulses with more overlap or raise the RF energy level if it's tolerated by the patient. You don't need to start over. It's not like, oh no, I didn't hold it for the exact 10 minutes that I should have. Yes, it is important. And that's why I always tell people when you're preheating, try to preheat all the way to 42 degrees, because even if you start to drop under a little bit, you, at least you're not dropping under 39. You may be at like 40 um, when you drop a little bit, maybe 39, but it's rare that you're going to drop into 38. So try to preheat all the way up to 42 and try to really push towards 42 throughout the whole treatment but it's not the end of the world. Just release a few more pulses, stacked pulses in that one area that's dropping. You see everywhere else is 40 and this one area is 38, no problem. Just hold it there, release, 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 and you'll see the temperature go up. And okay, now you're at 40 there, awesome, move on. Um, or you're only at RF level three, so take it up. If they're dropping, take it up to RF level four. Most people can tolerate four just fine. This is for the body though, not necessarily the face. They can't always tolerate RF4, um, but on the body, sure, most people can. Okay, next one. You want to perform a cellulite treatment on the buttocks for a patient who went through the same treatment last year on her abdomen. Do you need to perform a test procedure again for this patient? The answer is D. Test procedures need to be performed for every new treatment area because everywhere is different, right? It's, they haven't, first of all, they haven't seen you in a while. So what if they were on a new medication that they didn't tell you about that they could severely bruise? Um, also another area is different where it could be much more sensitive. Like the arms are really thin uh, comparative to the buttocks. So uh, just a quick test procedure with the vacuum is going to be important in, in a new treatment area. Not much more to say about that. Next, uh, what is the maximal depth of penetration of mode four? Kind of a trick question, I feel like, uh, but the answer is A. Um, maybe you could have thought it was D, the sum, because mode four, we know when we're in mode four, one third of the energy goes to all three depths. So one third of the energy goes to mode one, one third to mode two, one third to mode three. I should have done that the opposite way, one to three. Um, but the, it is the same depth. It's still reaching the same depth as mode one. So we're going deep when we're in mode four, which is going to be great for preheating. What is the most important advantage of V-form? So I actually had taken this question out when I had remade it. Um, the answer is A, it features core technology, but honestly, I, I all of them, they're all important. Um, 
the most important advantage of V-Form, of course, like we use RF energy with vacuum, right? And our vacuum is really good and it's really strong. And we know the vacuum does so many important things to our tissue. It, it increases microcirculation. It helps with lymphatics. It helps with edema. It helps push the heat deeper. It helps with our rigid collagen that is creating our cellulite. So it's, it's good and RF is heat and we need heat to be able to get biological responses. Um, yeah, it has different size applicators. So we can treat the entire body quickly and easily. Um, D, it has multipolar configuration. Yeah, we have multiple electrodes on all three of the tips. The small one has four electrodes. The medium has four, the large has six. So we can preheat really, really quickly and hold the heat, that's important. The answer is A, because the core technology is really more so proprietary to Viora. Uh, it makes us different in a way that we can do refit, which is skin tightening on the body. Um, other companies cannot get the results that we can with that. Um, we can precisely take the heat where we want it, like into the fat if we're doing contouring. That's why the answer is A, but actually it originally took this question out because all of them are important. So whatever you wrote down here, you're right. <laughs> Okay, next one. What are the targets uh, of deep heating by RF? So is it, so we're talking about deep, right? Is it a deep heating by RF? Is it fat cells? Is it fibroblast cells? Is it connective tissue and blood vessels? Or is all of the above? The answer is D, it's all of the above. Um, I could see how you would put A, fat cells, because deep tissue heating, yeah, we're in the fat layer. That's what our target is, is to stimulate lipolysis and shrink fat cells down. But we also have fibroblast cells that, that are deep. We also have the connective tissue that are deep. We also have a lot of blood vessels that are deep and all of them play an important role when we're doing the treatment. We're getting microcirculation, even in the hypodermis, the connective tissue, that strong rigid septae that gives us our cellulite issues with heat and with vacuum, we're able to massage that. So they're not so rigid and they're a, a little bit more flexible. So they're not pulling down on the skin. Fibroblast cells are found in the dermis and um, hypodermis. So those just aid in healing and collagen. Um, and then fat cells, of course, we want lipolysis. So X actually for all of those things. Next one, why do women suffer from uh, more from cellulite than men? And the answer is, should be E, A, B, and C. Um, because women have less collagen in their skin and a higher percentage of body fat. Yes, unfortunately we do. Men have a lot thicker skin than we do. Um, and we typically have a, a higher percent of body fat. Women have different hormonal fluctuations, of course, right? We know that with menopause, with our periods, with pregnancies, our hormones are so different and fluctuate much easier. And then C, women have a different structure of their subcutaneous layer. Yeah, we do. Um, when you look at men's subcutaneous layer, it is very um, dense with collagen and ours is not so dense with collagen and they're, they're, the septae are shaped more like a U. So our fat cells have the ability of being really open to the skin from below and able to push from below. So we get dimpling a lot easier. So unfortunately for us women, all of these things, but we can treat it, right? Okay, next one, which of the below statements is false? Collagen is a major structural, oh, let me just find the, I don't have to read all of these. Um, ah, D is the false answer. The amount of collagen tends to increase with age. No, unfortunately not, <laughs> it's opposite. When we hit 40, that's when our collagen production almost completely stops. And thank goodness we have heat-based technologies that tell it not to and tell it, uh-uh, you're not done yet, you know, keep producing, but uh, it's definitely the opposite way. It stops, it doesn't increase. Um, but all the other things are true. It's a major structural protein. It's really tough, tensile strength um, more than steel. The quantity and quality of your, of your skin's collagen has a major role in your skin's appearance. Of course, that's why we're in this industry. Okay, what are the new unique features of the core technology? Allows independent heating, sorry, I, I keep wanting to read all those. What are the unique features of core technology? Um, so I think it's the answer is D, if I'm not mistaken. 
Yeah. So the answer is D. Um, it does those two things, A and C, allows independent heating depth control by applying three different frequencies. So we actually just spoke about that. But then we also have the multi mode, mode four, that employs all three, three frequencies at the same time. Uh, B, no, because uh, vacuum's not a thing with core. Core is just how deep we're penetrating into the tissue. Next one, one of the main purposes of deep tissue heating with RF energy is to, um, what is the answer to that one? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Oops, I went too far, oh my God. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Okay, so it's 11 down. Hold on, let me just, so I thought it would be all, I thought that one was all of the above, but I took, took that one out of the original one. Let me get, get the answer for myself. Um, oh, here we go, C, okay, let me go back. There we go. Okay. One of the main purposes of deep tissue heating of RF energy is to facilitate the breakdown of stored energy triglycerides in um, a fat cell. Exactly. That's what we're doing. That's what lipolysis is. Lipolysis is taking um, that stored fat, which is energy. And when we get to that certain temperature, we're able to stimulate lipolysis, meaning the fat cells actually will release the, the fluid inside the triglycerides that fluid then escapes into the extracellular matrix. That's where all of our fluid is. That's where we carry edema if we have swelling, extra water. And then our body naturally will burn it for, for energy, meaning once it's in the extracellular matrix, it then moves into the circulatory system and the circulatory system then takes it somewhere that we need to build it for energy. So right now I'm talking a lot with my hands, so it could take it to my arms and my muscles to to burn that uh, for energy, or it could take it to my heart because my heart needs energy. E everywhere in the body needs energy. So it's just really telling the body like, hey, seat up, stop holding fat in this area. It, it also helps the enzyme lipase. Lipase is the enzyme that tells the body, don't store energy here, don't store fat here. Um, and when we get older, that lipase enzyme really starts to slow down. So with in the increased amount of treatments, right, we're doing a, a treatment on top of a treatment on top of a treatment every week, we're telling that enzyme lipase, like, hey, get back to working, you know, tell your body in that area, in that area where you're holding fat on the pooch of your belly to work properly, because our body naturally knows how to break down fat. Um, we're just helping it along with heat and vacuum, but we're also helping it like work normally how you should. Um, and that's why when we stop doing the treatments, the fat doesn't just come back overnight. It's because we're helping that enzyme. All right, all these other um, things are somewhat true though too. That's why I was like, wait, what is the answer here? I didn't want to spend too much time reading it. Um, but we are helping, well, it's saying decrease. So we're helping um, microcirculation. Therefore, when we help microcirculation, circulation, oxygen and nutrients naturally will come to the tissue. So we're getting healthier tissue when we're doing um, heating up of the skin. Um, we're helping the rigid collagen cross links with heat as well. Um, and that's what where we're getting really good results with um, cellulite, which I already spoke about. And um, we're actually not decreasing, we're increasing cell metabolism. So cell metabolism is we want the body to metabolize, right? Metabolize the fat. So that's why that's not true. Okay, next one. The vacuum um, either intensifies the treatment to facilitate deeper penetration. Oh, sorry, I keep forgetting. I'm not gonna read all of those. The answer is uh, D. So it's going to be all of the above. So yes. The higher the vacuum, the deeper we go. That's why I always, um, in my trainings or on webinars, or if I'm 
and an event teaching. That's why I always say if somebody can tolerate in the test procedure vacuum four and RF four on body treatments, it's optimal because you're gonna one, heat them faster, um, but two, remembering all the good things that the vacuum does. It One of them is making sure that that heat penetrates deep. So it's gonna be, a, there's gonna be a big difference between like two patients. One patient that has um, belly fat and another patient that has a lot of belly fat. How thick is that fat layer? It's not the same. Somebody that has a little bit of fat and somebody that has a lot of fat, you need the ability of getting deep, right? You want to get the heat throughout that full fat layer. So the higher the vacuum, great, the deeper you're going to go, which is important. It increases uh, local blood circulation. So that microcirculation I was talking about, which helps oxygen levels and nutrients, um, diffusion in the tissue, and it stimulates lymphatic drainage. Yes, it helps reduce edema too. Remember how I said the triglycerides, that fluid comes out and into the extracellular matrix and the circulatory will um, bring it to burn it for fuel because it is, that's what fat is, it's energy. Anything extra that's in the extracellular matrix, then the lymphatic system will take care of the extra. So it, they'll immediately become a bit smaller because the reduced edema, because we're working in the lymphatic direction when we are doing deep RF treatments, which means fat when I say deep. Okay, next one. How do you determine the maximum level, uh, vacuum level for your patient? Um, well, what I really wanna say is D is true, but it's not. Um, it is uh, C the level that was determined by the test procedure. And the reason why I wanna say it's D is because for most people, that's what it's gonna be because that is gonna be for optimal results. However, you have a patient that comes in who's 70 years old and you know maybe you're doing refit and you have the ability of preheating them on vacuum four, but they have thin skin and easily bru bruising bleeding tendencies. Of course not, you know, you'll, you'll definitely keep your vacuum much lower. Um, or if you're working on like the submental or jowls, then no, that it's going to be very different. Um, but for, I would say for most um, women that are coming in for a belly pooch or cellulite or post baby belly that most can handle a vacuum for. Uh, but of course you're gonna test it first, make sure there's not any crazy bruising, blending, bruising, bleeding tendencies and move on from there. All right, next one. In the preheating phase, which tissue is heated? Okay, our answer is uh, D, the dermis and subcutaneous layers of the skin. Because remember, preheating, we're using mode four, Mode four is one third of the energy to all three depths. So we have the hypodermis being hit, we have the reticular dermis being hit, and we have the papillary dermis hit. Uh, so all of them are being targeted with heat, therefore we can build heat really quickly and easily. In phase three and four, which is the fibroblast stimulation during the cellulite reduction treatment, which of the following applies? Um, B is not true because we don't have to work in the lymphatic direction uh, with, with the last two phases. Because at this point, we're not even in the lymphatics. At this point, this is when we're using mode two and three, two minutes and two minutes at the tail end, just um, keeping the heat to stimulate fibroblast cells for collagen. So we're at this point above lymphatics, so it doesn't matter. Um, skin temperature can be reduced. No, you still have to have the biology behind it is 39 to 42 degrees Celsius is the temperature that we must achieve to even stimulate a fibroblast cell. So we can't drop under that. Um, and we definitely do not need to work in a maximum vacuum intensity. It's actually opposite. We, when we're in those last two phases, mode two and three, we actually want to always drop the vacuum to a one, never any higher than that because we wanna make sure that we're staying superficial and letting the modes target the depth for us instead of the vacuum pushing the heat back into the fat. At this point, no, we just want enough vacuum to have coupling on the tissue so it's safe, but um, allowing the mode to hit where the reticular dermis is and where the papillary dermis is. The reason why high vacuum is good for like that is because that's a thick layer. So yeah, you wanna crank it up. 
But at this point, no, just vacuum one. So the answer is working with a 30 to 40% overlap. Now, it's this isn't like an absolute, like, oh my gosh, I haven't been doing this. Have I been doing it wrong? No. If you're keeping the heat everywhere, really uniformed and homogeneous, then you've been fine. Um, but that's why our technique can change in these last two phases. This is why we can hold down the applicator and just glide on the skin. You just saw I did probably a 30% overlap. And that one area, I'm hitting it quite a few times. So that's usually our technique and we just slowly move and keeping the heat the same. But if you're moving faster and you're not quite doing a 30 to 40% overlap, it's not the end of the world, but we wanna to try to stay tight and keep that heat really, really good in all area. Next one, treatment with the refit protocol is aimed at, um, definitely not removing tattoos, it's actually opposite. We can't go over tattoos or it will create arcs and burns and blisters on our skin. Um, but it is B, treating lax, sagging skin on the body. Sure, it can help with stretch marks, but that's not our target. Um, our target is to really, really tighten lax skin on the body. So it could be post baby belly, it could be post dramatic weight loss, which is what it was created for. Um, or it could be just somebody getting older, right? And they just have creepiness on the skin, like their arms or their inner thighs. Those places are thin, thin skinned areas will go the soonest with laxity. So that's where this uh, protocol works really, really well. Next one, the refit protocol affects lax skin by building collagen and the dermal lymphatic epidermal. Oh, okay. So answer is going to be D, building new collagen in the dermal and hypodermal tissue. Um, it's almost kind of a trick question because you would think it would be A, building new collagen in the dermal tissue, which is true. That is what we're primarily doing. Um, but because we have fibroblast cells and collagen in the hypodermis, and because we are reaching a little bit into the hypodermis, we're also helping collagen there. But most of the results are coming from the reticular and papillary dermis, which is the dermal tissue. So if you put A, you're kind of right too. But we're never working as superficial as the epidermis. Okay, um, which RF mode penetrates deepest into the skin? Um, mode one. Mode one's our deepest, right? It goes mode one, two, and three. I always give this trick. Think of like a three-story building, first floor of a building, second floor of a building, third floor of a building. Picture that building and just drop it into the skin. Where's mode one, mode one gonna be? Deep, right? And mode three, superficial. So if you kind of think of it as like a basement, the regular story of the house and an attic, the attic's always gonna be three, the basement's always gonna be one. Increasing the vacuum level will have the effect of A and C. It helps with lymphatic drainage. Um, the higher the vacuum, the, the more we can really work with lymphatics and push that extra fluid through the lymphatic system. And it also gives a deeper RF penetration. We kind of already went through that. Hopefully it doesn't increase the treatment time. Actually, it would decrease the treatment time. What is the advantage of multipolar RF configuration? Um, all of the above, right? It uh, provides faster treatments because in mode four, we have all three depths going at the same time. So it's quicker. Therefore, it's more convenient for you. It's more convenient for the patient and provides homogeneous heating. We get proper heating everywhere. Okay, so that was, that was the regular 20 questions. Now, <laughs> our extra credit because I messed up. Let's go to that. Um, we'll just go to the answer. Okay, so I think the first one I gave you was, uh, I can't do it that way. Let me go to the slides. Slideshow, beginning. Why isn't this working? That's so weird. I don't know, my PowerPoint's not working today. Um, okay, so. Okay, here's our first uh, extra credit. You want to perform a cellulite treatment on the buttocks for a patient. Is there anything that needs to be considered? Yes, and it's D. 
you should always stay one inch above the gluteal fold. If you don't, you can actually create the crease to look um, disfigured and deformed because you can flatten that area in certain, certain parts of it. So it can almost look like waved or not that strong shelf that you want from the buttocks to your leg. So I always recommend take a white eyeliner pencil and mark one inch above. So you're making sure that when you're treating cellulite, you are staying um, away from that gluteal fold. But everything else, vacuum, yes, you can turn it up. Uh, sides, no, for sure you can treat those. Um, but yeah, the one inch above the gluteal fold is very important. Okay, um, what is the most important thing to remember when using the V-form on the lower face? That is going to be C, always stay below the cheekbone and stay under vacuum level three. So why, um, why? <laughs> so the cheekbone, anything above here, this is what gives us our youthful appearance. This is the fat we want, right? We want our cheeks um, because it gives us youth. What we don't want is as we age is the fat that accumulates in the lower face or submental. And this is what doesn't give us our youth. So staying below the cheekbone is getting rid of the fat that you want and tighten the skin at the same time. Stay under a vacuum level two. Yes, that small tip, first of all, bruises more than the others. And secondly, this area highly bruises. And you don't wanna do that. We, we wanna make their skin stronger and healthier not the other way around. So um, vacuum one or two. Now the RF energy I put, never use RF energy more than two. That's not necessarily true because some people are harder to heat. Some people can tolerate RF three. Most people you don't want to do RF four on, but if they can tolerate it, it's fine. It's comfortable for them. And you're having a hard time heating them in general, then sure you can try it. Just don't go up too high in your vacuum. Um, and you can use multiple stacked pulses if you need to. Um, I usually do like two stacked pulses, two, 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 when I'm preheating them. So that's fine. Never use the medium size applicator. Um, okay. Next one is going to be, which one is the truest out of all of these? A patient that is very thin wants her abdomen treated for a small amount of localized belly fat. The answer is D, use the medium or large applicator. I've had many accounts say, we're just not getting results on this one patient. What's the scenario? She's really thin. She just has a little bit of fat. We've been using the small and there's your answer. Um, you don't have to lower your RF energy because RF is RF. You can turn it higher to get her preheated. If you need to, that's fine. You don't have to use a lower vacuum intensity. You go high. It's The vacuum is so good for so many reasons and it's on the abdomen. So if the test procedure says four, do four. But the reason why we don't wanna do a small applicator is because you have to remember the depth of penetration is so different from a small to the medium or the large. And even though it's a small amount of fat on somebody thin, the, the fat layer is so much deeper in the abdomen comparative to like the submental or jowling area, the lower face. Um, so never the small on a body, unless it's the arms, of course, because if you have thin arms, you just sometimes can't get the medium to fit. And that's a thinner, much thinner area than the abdomen. But if it's a little pooch on the belly, the thin girl, you don't have to use the large, but do the medium. The medium's gonna still stay on her skin just fine. And the small just really most likely won't have the depth of penetration that you really need for really, really targeting the fat. All right, so that was, that was it. We did it, uh, Lucy. It was an hour. Oh, that's good. So, um, so I hope you guys did well. I hope this was helpful. Even if you got all the answers right, I, I hope that it's still like, well, I'm glad I, I um, joined just because, you know, I maybe learned a couple things as I went through the answers. 
Uh, and I'm really excited for this series. So I'm gonna do all of our technology first for the V series. So um, next is gonna be for the VST, then we're gonna do uh, the VFR, then we're gonna do the IPL, then we're gonna do the NDAG laser. So you're more than welcome to be on all of those it, or the technologies that you do own. Um, and I'll do it the same way, except for I won't mess up this time and I'll have the right PowerPoint the whole time. So there won't be extra credit. Um, but 20 questions and then we'll go through the answers. And then after that, I'm going to go into our um, dermafuse and our pristine, which is our microdermabrasion. Our, our dermafuse is our newest technology. So if you have those, I'll do tests on that too. Um, but yeah, I'm excited for it. So I'm going to try to do these once a month. So next one will be in uh, February and then next one in March. So they will, they will continue. Uh, any questions? You can type in questions or you can unmute yourselves if you want, if you had any. If you don't, no worries. All right, I guess we're good. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed it and I will see you guys on the next series. Thank you so much for joining.